in previous module we said certain reactions give out energy and certain certain reactions require energy to proceed these two types of reactions which require energy are called endothermic or endergonic reactions in these type of reactions energy has to be provided to the system in order for reaction to proceed in the forward direction exergonic reactions are the ones which release energy in these reactions or in these processes energy is released from the system in case where energy has to be provided to the system or endergonic reactions the value of delta g is a positive number the reactions which are ex exergonic they release energy in this case the delta g is a negative number we can understand these principles using a simple example a ball lying on the ground in order for for a ball to go up to the mountain a little mound we have to provide energy to the ball we have to push the ball and we have to uh, we have to provide energy so the ball rolls up the mound if the ball is already lying on the mound it will fall down it will roll down on its own if we use this analogy to understand reactions in there are two types of reactions in one type of reactions the products are at a higher energy react at a higher energy level and when pro reaction occurs the products when they are rea the reactants are converted to products react the products are at a lower energy level so the energy is released from the system the exothermic reactions or exergonic reactions in the other case endothermic or endergonic reactions the products are at a lower energy level and the react the the reactants are at lower energy level and products are at a higher energy level we have to provide energy to the products so they become reactants in biology these processes are reactions are not always one sided if a product if a reactant can become product the product can also become the reactant so these are reversible reactions let's look at a hypothetical example a is a is converting into b b can also convert to a here the this process is exergonic it is releasing energy in this case the a is being converted into b how much a gets converted into b and how much b gets converted to, into a this is a function of delta g free energy at equilibrium at point in which concentration of a and concentration of b is constant the amount or the number of a molecules or a atoms are which are converting into b atoms is the same as the b atoms getting converted into a at a atoms or a molecules so the total number of molecules at equilibrium does not change in our case at equilibrium there is 30% of the molecules in our system are a and 70% of the molecules are b so conversion of a into b is is a is a reaction which is exothermic it has a delta minus delta g the value of delta g is in a minus number because energy is being released that is why a is a smaller has a smaller amount in our reaction tube as com as compared with the b molecule so this is a process in which both reactants and products can interconvert let's look at actual example of this for example glucose one phosphate if we take this molecule and we put it in a system in a water it automatically converts into glucose six phosphate in fact 95% of glucose one phosphate will convert into glucose six phosphate this happens on its own because the value of delta g is a negative number what determines that how many molecules of glucose 1 phosphate get converted into glucose 6 phosphate it is the value of delta g if the delta g is a larger number most of the reactants will be converted into products if the delta g is a small negative number then we will have higher amounts of products not all of the products not all the reactants will get converted into products majority of the reactants will stay uh, stay reactants however we'll have small amounts of products made if the delta g is a small negative number
and if a delta G is positive number, A will not convert into or glucose one phosphate will not convert into glucose six phosphate unless and until we provide energy to the system. So, so basically at equilibrium, the number of molecules of glucose one phosphate and glucose six phosphate is constant. It does not mean that individual molecules cannot change. So, if one molecule of glucose one phosphate gets converted into glucose six phosphate at an, any given time, this one molecule of glucose six phosphate will also get converted into glucose one phosphate. So, this is the delta G for this reaction is minus 1.7 kilocalories per mole. And this happens at a specific temperature and a specific molarity and pH. Because logically, if we think about it, if the process of glucose 1 phosphate getting converted into glucose 6 phosphate is exothermic, why don't all the glucose 1 phosphate molecules convert into glucose 6 phosphate since they are at a lower energy state? And we have said processes when the reactants are at higher, uh, higher energy state than the products this process happens on its own. However, we have, we are looking at the system at a specific temperature. I will tell you later how temperature plays a role in determining the equilibrium point. Anyways, for now I would like to re-emphasize that at equilibrium, amount of reactant and poly and the product molecules stays the same. It's a constant. Although the individual molecules keep changing from one form to from reactants to products. At this state, delta G is zero.